right, so we're back on the build here. As you can see, I have my shrink tubing, my motor's on. I'm just trying to get an overall layout of what this is going to what this is going to look like. Um, you know, how long my leads need to be for my ESCs and so on and so forth. But before all of that, on the F3 version 4 board, it's a good time before you start welding up anything, and, and this goes for any build, is just to hook this up to, to Betaflight, get it updated. Um, right now we're at 3.2, so get it updated to 3.2. And also to what's important is to, to take care of that OSD at this at this stage. You can do it afterwards on this particular frame because there's just four bolts and the, the whole top comes off and you can get to that port. So you can do the OSD afterwards if you want to. I just I just like getting everything done beforehand why I can just have the board in hand. Um, and so what I did on that is, is you want to get an FTDI and this plug, this this harness here already comes with this um, all-in-one flight controller. So you just want to plug this into your FTDI. It's already laid out for you. It's really simple. I'll put the uh, it's 1.6, and I'll put it. I put the link down below in the description um, for you to download. And then once it's hooked up, you just want to make sure on your OSD that you select the the right battery pack. So 4S, 3S, whatever you plan on running here. Also, too, the camera is really important as well. So whether you're going with PAL or the American Standard, you want to make sure that's properly selected. You also want to make sure to uh, adjust your voltage for the low voltage warning um, while you're in there. So, and, and there's some things that are odd, that are turned on, and you might not want them. So, and you might want a certain things shifted around and whatever not. So, I have a video actually on my channel about um, configuring your OSD and so you can watch that video if you want to if you're having problems it's pretty much the same for this board you don't want to hook power to it you don't want to hook your USB you just want to hook this to it and that's it and that video fully explains it and I, and I do believe that video also has a uh, has a link in its description on where you can get the OSD software so that's an important step. Like I said, on this particular frame, though, you can do it afterwards as well by just taking the entire top off. Um, one thing I don't like about the board, and it's actually my biggest pet peeve, is, is this here. I don't like battery leads hanging off to the side. I just don't. I mean, it might be fine for racing, but when you're freestyling and you you got branches and everything, the last thing you want is a big loop hanging out here for a branch to hang on and then break this board. So what I'm going to be doing is taking the battery leads and running them out the back is what I'm going to do. Um, and then I'll just drill two holes here and I'll put a zip tie in here to zip tie it to the frame so it's secure. And I'll probably put a little zip tie behind the leads. So I'll have a zip tie going across here for the, uh, you know, to the board or, you know, to the frame. And then I'll have a little zip tie behind that to kind of keep it from pulling. So I don't like anything off to the side. Um, I've had problems with that in the past with boards like this. Um, on this board here, because we're running individual ESCs instead of a 4 and one 4 and one is so much easier for this. But since we're running individual ESCs, what I'm going to do is there's pads on the top and there's pads on the bottom. So I'm going to have two of the positive tabs right here on the top and two right here on the bottom. This is a breaker. So you don't want them over here. You want them on this side. And then the negatives on this side, two of the negatives on this side. What I also like about this board, too, is that um, they have extra pads. You can actually run a hexacopter with this. So if, if, you, if something goes wrong and one of your controllers goes bad for one of your motors, you can just unweld it and then weld it on one of the other two pads. And so it's, you got a little bit of redundancy there. It's kind of nice. Um, so that's about it, and then here is your boot button right here. Um, everything's pretty laid out. Oh, another thing I wanted to bring up too is the smart port. Um, smart port on this board here is actually, you can run a GPS with this board, which is kind of unbelievable with everything else you can do with this board, but there is right here, I do believe it's this one right here on the corner, um, there's a little pad here, and that's for the GPS, um, I believe that's for the GPS in. And so if you put, if you weld your smart port from your FR Sky receiver right here, this already has inversion built in, or it already has a, a filter for the inversion built in. So you don't have to worry about, 
you know welding on this little tiny pad to get around the inversion you can just hook it straight to there and then you can just activate your port so uh, smart smart uh, smart port works really great with this board by just using that pad right there so you don't have to go through a bunch of extra steps very very easy so I wanted to point that out all right so I'll get back to the build and I'll be right back with okay, you I'm back again um, so I'm putting on my ESC's right now and as you can see I'm just leaving the full length wire and the reason I'm doing that is once I tuck this underneath of the the arm shrink wrap I'm just gonna fold the wires down and under like this okay and the reason I want to keep a little bit of slack is in case I break an arm I find that this helps save the motor and it helps save the ESC you know you break an arm right here and of course the motor flops around a little bit it's got a little bit of slack here to do so as opposed to being really tight ripping out one of these leads breaking your ESC's or single phasing out your your motor so I just go ahead and put them on full length and I just always fold them under like this very nicely right underneath the shrink tubing so that's just something that I do um, the shrink tubing I, I use I, I wanted to point this out um, just because I, I think it's a great deal. This is um, it's called Gardner Bender or something. I don't know. I get it at Home Depot. This is a great little kit. It was like eleven bucks, and you get a, a ton. I mean, I've gotten so many builds out of this. It's I bought this like two years ago. So I just wanted to point that out. It's kind of nice. I mean, it's hard to find a good source for shrink tube um, in different assorted sizes, and I did get this at Home Depot. So I just wanted to point that out as well. I always shrink tube right here you know always shrink tube your leads but the reason for that is simple is you know this is carbon fiber it breaks it cracks it goes across the leads next thing you know you got problems bigger problems than you had before um, so that's what I wanted to point out there and also too I'm um, gonna throw up a picture too of my uh, welding station I know some of you probably already have a welding station but those who do not I have this 898 D plus and the one thing I like about it the most is this right here it already has a heat gun for it like a reheater gun and a heat gun so it makes it really simple to do this uh, the shrink tubing you don't have to use a lighter and all that kind of business you know or your soldering iron where you end up with bits of solder all over the place this just makes it so much nice it heats up fast too so I just want to point that out all right so I'm gonna get the ESC's done I'm gonna get them tucked underneath of the arm um, the arm shrink wrap and then shrink wrap them to the arms like that. So there you go. Okay, I'm back. right back. Um, you know, I just wanted to add this little extra part in here. Uh, for those guys that don't know how to solder or they're not very good at soldering or um, they've never soldered before. So, you know, the whole idea of the soldering is, you know, the longer you keep your tip going, the more oxidized. You can see how oxidized it is right now. And that leads to big problems. So you just want to make sure to keep your tip you know nice and clean nice and clean and um, this one's gonna oxidize a little bit faster I might have it set up a little too high I got it set for um, 450 I'm gonna go down to 400 real quick there you go I'm going down to 400 so the oxidation on your tip is what it does is it actually builds a layer of oxidation it keeps the tip from getting as hot as it should um, the other thing that you want to do when you're soldering is to pre tin your parts. So you can see here I pre tinned all of the ends to the ESCs and I've also pre tinned, pre soldered, but we call it tinned, um, the, the leads for the motors here. Don't be afraid to using, uh, using too much solder on, on these lead wires. Um, there's plenty of space here between that and you want to make sure to have a nice blob of solder when you're doing your welding so you, know, you just make sure you have and you want to make sure too you know you have your tip um, hot enough so 400 degrees Celsius is pretty good you can see that's nice and shiny right there um, if you if you're running HD video there um, that one turned out really nice. Everything's really nice and shiny and you can see how quick it was too with the proper setting If you have your tip too cold, you're gonna be holding it on on the part too long and you're gonna end up with um, With cold welds also too, you want to get something to be you know some helping hands here to help hold your parts together so What we're gonna do here. Let me see. That's the center one 
This is the end one. So you can see here, I'm going to put my shrink tubing actually on first before I forget to do that. So shrink tubing goes on. And the shrink tubing goes on. There we go. And I haven't uh, used any Loctite on the motors or yet, or yet or not. So I mean, when I'm done, I'll, be, I'll make, I'll go through the whole build and, and Loctite all the parts down since I'm dealing with a lot of metal parts here. Okay, and then when you're soldering, you know, if you have it properly set, uh, make sure your tip is shiny. If you have it properly set, you shouldn't have to hold it down for very long. You should just be able to blob it on there like that. And be done with it if it's not correct just add more solder to it and also to not try to don't don't move the parts that you're soldering together because if you move them um, and don't blow on them either. Don't blow to cool them. Just heat them up. You should be able to heat them up, leave them on there, hold on to them. Do not move the wire and the part you're trying to solder to because you'll weaken that solder joint. I'm having a hard time getting in here because of space requirements, because of the camera sitting right here above my head. Okay. Nice and shiny. It's always good to have shiny. So once again, because of the camera situation here, I'm trying to semi be in a semi contortionist with this. And once again, nice and shiny. So nice, nice and shiny here. Sorry, I bumped the camera with my bill and my hat here. Um, and that's what you're looking for. So then what we're going to do is put the shrink tubing on. Make sure it's butted all the way up here because when you go to heat it up, it tends to move around a little bit. Turn on my uh, reheater here. If you, if you heat from the back as opposed to the front, it doesn't move around as much. You know, where it exposes what you're trying to cover up. Okay. Get to the underside of this. And there you go. That's... That's how you weld up an ESC, so there's really not much to it. I try not to have any crossing of the wires or anything like that. If, if it's not set right, I can just set it right in uh, BL Heli Configurator, so I'm not really worried about how the wires are set up. It's not like back in the day where you, you had to go back through and switch one wire and stuff to, wrote, you know, to, to uh, make your motor go the right direction, you know. So, so there you go with that.